I was just curious. I know, um, I know you really wanted to play, you know, in years past with Team USA, and the timing just didn't work with, with your son coming along. Uh, I'm just wondering what what it means to you to to finally not just be able to do it, but have the, the timing work out, and and what these first few days has been like. Now you finally gotten to to get there. Uh, it's been a blessing uh, for one. Like you said, in years past, I've always been a part of USA basketball uh, when I was 16, 17, um, 15, 16. And now <clears throat> to be, you know, on a national team um, is, you know, it's a dream come true. You know, it's, it's very, it's an elite group, prestigious group, and it's very, very hard um, to be selected. Um, so I don't take that for granted at all. Um, obviously had to get the blessing from, you know, wife and, and the boys because um, they won't be allowed to, to travel with us. But ultimately, you know, you don't pass up opportunities like this um, to represent your country, represent everybody from where you're from, um, your name, and ultimately USA Basketball. Um, so the, la the first couple of days were great, you know, just getting acclimated with the guys. Um, it's always amazing because sometimes we're a little bit too unselfish, and that tends to happen when you have so many good players together. Um, you know, sometimes we're making too many extra passes. Sometimes we're not as aggressive. Um, so we're just kind of working through those things, uh, but they've been great. You know, Pop Pop has a a drive about him that you know he's trying to prepare us for what's to come. You know, and it won't be an easy road for us. Thank you. Uh, we'll go next with Grady Diaz, and then we'll go to Sean Higgins. Hey, Grady. Uh, Okay, so your mom put the ball in your hands as a kid. She was your first trainer. She taught you how to hoop. How special is this moment for her? And what's it like getting to spend all this time with your childhood friend, Jason Tatum? Oh, man, everybody's super excited. You know, I'm, I'm trying to stay, you know, mellow and calm about it. Um, you know, obviously, it's a, you're on a global stage. You know, everybody's paying attention. Everybody watches the Olympics. Um, but on the flip side, everybody wants the U.S. to lose. You know, so we have that chip on our shoulder. But, you know, to what your point, Grady, my mom is super ecstatic. You know, I think she's probably more excited than I am. Uh, she has my two medals from when I was younger. So hopefully we get this gold. She'll probably steal this one from me too. But, you know, uh, I, I go out and try to compete on a nightly basis for her and my family. Um, and, you know, I wouldn't be where I am today without her. Brad. Sean, you're up. Uh, Brad, with you guys spending this much time together during this whole tournament, how much are you expecting there to be conversations among different guys trying to get guys to join certain teams or like, hey, we should play together? I mean, how much how much of those kinds of conversations do you think are going to be happening? Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, probably a lot, you know. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it depends on who, who's a free agent or not. But, you know, for the most part, we don't we, we can't mix that in right now. You know, we're, we're focused on one goal at hand and that's bringing them back to gold medal. And, uh, you know, granted, we all have our respective individual, you know, goals and talents, you know, once this is done, you know, uh, we can address those issues then. But, you know, from, for the most part, uh, we keep USA basketball and, you know, our main focus is getting the goal. Thank you. We'll go with John Corrales and then Tim Reynolds. John, go ahead. Hey, Brad. Um, obviously, you and the story of you and Jason has, has been well documented. And now you've got an opportunity to not just play – like you guys played together in the all-star game, which was a fun exhibition. Now you were actually playing like real meaningful basketball together. Uh, what, what do you think that's going to be like with, with you, you, with him, you and him on the floor? Uh, I'm, we're both excited, you know, uh, for one, we, we grew up five minutes from each other and, you know, to, to have two of the same guys from the same high school uh, on the same team is, I don't know if that's ever happened, you know, for USA basketball. And, uh, we're excited about it. You know, even from growing up, we've never been on the same team ever. And pick up, we're never on the same team. You know, so this is this is definitely exciting for both of us. I'm I'm definitely I'm happy about his growth. I'm I'm, a, I'm excited to see him on a global stage just as well as myself and uh, and everybody. Man, we have a we have a really good team. But you know, Jason and I have a special relationship, and uh, I'm looking forward to it, man. It'll be exciting. You know, the ultimate thing is getting the goal, whatever that means. Thank you. We'll go to Tim Reynolds and go and then Joseph uh, Vigdalici. Hopefully I got your last name right. Thanks, Craig. Hey, Brad, Tim Reynolds with the Associated Press. Um, you've been playing with, with, well, they're changing the ball for next year, but you've been playing with one type of ball for your entire NBA career. I know it changes in college, depending on where you are and what league you're in and all that, but 
this is a different ball. What, what was your process as far as getting used to that again? And is it really that different or are there some things that you had to kind of relearn or adjust? <clears throat> Oh, it's, yeah, it's a totally different ball for sure. Uh, we're still, we're all getting acclimated with it. You know, it's very, it's very slick when it's new. Um, you're talking about the USA ball, right? Or the Wilson ball? I'm talking about the international ball that right. they're getting used to. I mean, yeah. obviously, yeah. Getting, you have to relearn it in the NBA too now this fall, but this one. Yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, so, yeah, the FIBA ball is, is, is very slick. It has more lines on it than a uh, regular ball does, uh, more engraved lines on it too. Uh, so it, it <clears throat> it's definitely different. You have to you have to get used to it, and obviously break the ball break the balls in more. But uh, you know, once they're you know pretty much dribbled hundreds of times, you know, it, it feels like a normal basketball with you know the right leather to where you can grip it and have better control of it. So it's just a matter of just you know getting used to it. Ball is a ball. Thank you, Joseph. Go ahead. Bradley, Joe Viglucci with WRHU on Long Island in New York. Uh, kind of a two-parter. What does it mean to you to represent, be the first representative of the Washington Wizards in a, on the Olympics in a really long time? And you mentioned a lot of things you're excited about. What are you most looking forward to making this trip to Tokyo? Uh, for one, it's, I'm, I'm definitely happy to represent, uh, you know, D.C. in that way. That's, that's definitely – I didn't know that. That's amazing to hear. Um, and obviously we're all representing – you know, our respective teams and cities and everything of that nature. Um, you know, so I'm definitely, I'm honored in that, in that sense, for sure. Uh, and I've been to Tokyo before, actually, in, in years past. So uh, I'm excited to go back. I'm excited, you know, and embrace the culture again, eat the great food. Um, I know we'll be very confined over there, but uh, I'm just looking forward to the atmosphere. I know everybody roots against the U.S. Um, so I'm definitely, I'm excited about it. And just the camaraderie, real build over there for this extended time, you know, I'm looking forward to it. So it'll be, it'll be something I've never experienced before. And, you know, it's a great opportunity for me to learn from these other great players too. Thank you. We'll go with Chase Hughes next. And then following Chase, we'll use Chris Mulholland. Hey, Brad, first of all, congratulations for this. Um, what does it mean to you to be following in the footsteps of, of just so many legends who have played for Team USA and, and also wearing the number four, you know, Charles Barkley and Allen Iverson wore it, just uh, being part of this exclusive fraternity. Oh, man, it's, you, you don't take it for granted. You know, you understand uh, the history behind it. You understand the importance and how, like I keep saying, everybody wants to beat us, you know. And so it's always imperative that we have that mindset and that understanding, you know, in practice. You know, it starts here, you know, and then we carry it over into the games. And so I'm, I'm definitely, <clears throat> I'm excited about it. Um, you know, we have a really good team, a lot of guys we can learn from and, and just push each other to be better. So the sky's the limit for us. We can, we kind of, we got to control our own destiny, but it won't, like I keep saying, it won't be easy. You know, we, we got to, we got to continue to put in the work, continue to trust the pop and, uh, and, and execute on that. Chris, go ahead. And then we'll go with Ava Wallace. Hey, Bradley, hope all is well. Obviously we come into right having two gold medals. Obviously he's going to be a big leader for you guys. So what are some of those qualities you would like to see out of him as a leader? And then what kind of uh, – what, what has he looked like so far with you guys at training camp in these first couple of days? You know his famous quote, I am Kevin Durant. Uh, there's nothing changing. Like we, we know who he is. We know what he's capable of doing. And he's doing the same thing in practice. You know, he's, uh, he's aggressive. You know, he's a seven-foot scorer, elite scorer at all three levels. Uh, and his leadership is just is, is terrific. You know, uh, I think I've seen him, he's like 39 and old in USA basketball. And that's mm -hmm. that's crazy. So we, we definitely we want to keep that going. Um, you know, it, it speaks volumes for him to be, you know, 10 plus years in the league and, and still wanting to come back and, uh, you know, and, and be a part of this this prestigious fraternity. So, uh, you know, we, we definitely look up to him for, you know, to push us and, and lead us. Uh, but at the same time, he's like, he's very unselfish. You know, he's, he's very encouraging. You know, he wants everybody to do well. You know, he said something very unique today. He's like, be special. You know, that's why we're here. And, and that was, that, that stuck on with me. So hopefully we can all keep that mentality and understand that, you know, we're here for a reason. Thank you. Okay, we'll go final two questions. We'll go to Ava and then David uh, Chilato. Hopefully I got that right. Hey, Brad, nice to see you. Um, I, I feel like a lot of players, when they go on to their national teams, talk about sometimes having to pair back what they do for their club teams. Um, just obviously, since all of you guys are 
you know, kind of the guys on your team and you do so much. Have you had conversations with Hopper or other guys, Kevin, like you just mentioned, about the role you want to focus on or the type of scoring you want to focus on, how you want to want to fit in with these guys? Uh, not necessarily. Um, we kind of just free flow. Everybody's everybody's interchangeable uh, and everybody has free reign to be aggressive. It's just not like we obviously have to understand it. You know, it's only one basketball, but at the same time, everybody's unselfish. I think I said this earlier, like sometimes we're too unselfish and in the regard of, you know, we want, we understand who's on the floor with us. You know, we don't have to work hard to get a shot off or, you know, do everything on our own. Um, so, you know, it's definitely, it's, it's great in that sense. And we're just, we're just working that out. We're, we're steadily working that out, but, uh, you know, I think we'll figure it out eventually and, uh, and hit it free flowing, you know, come July 25th. So, that's all we can do. I think, obviously, we understand everybody's talented. Everybody, in a way, has to sacrifice. And for me personally, I want to defend. Like, I want to be one of the best defenders on the team and, and go out there and do that. We have – everybody can score. Everybody can give us 30 and 40. Like, so I want I want to be the guy who, who goes out and guards and, and gets after it. Thank you. Final question. Go ahead, David. Hey, Brad. David here from Italy. Uh, I'm curious about – what do you expect from the Olympic experience? I know this, this year is going to be probably different from the past, but how much do you expect from the Olympics and how much do you follow the Olympics in the past? Uh, well, I'm excited about opening ceremony. I'm always, you know, thrilled and, you know, definitely excited just to see all the countries come together and just, uh, you know, the host, the host country, just how well they, they put everything together. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to see what, what Tokyo does. Um, and just being there, you know, I've never been to the Olympics before, so... You know, it's definitely different than playing, you know, under 15, 16, 17 basketball. And uh, this is a global stage now, you know, and these guys are very talented. These teams are very talented. You know, we can't can't disrespect them. Uh, you know, we have to we have to approach every game, you know, with, you know, this team can whoop our butt at any moment, you know, type attitude. So I think we got it.